Japanese nuclear regulators are screening safety plans for a reactor in a potentially dangerous area. Operators want to put the plant back online, despite the possibility of a megaquake. Members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority spoke with representatives of Chubu Electric Power Company. They wanted to know about safety measures staff have put in place for the Hamaoka plant in central Japan. Staff asked the regulators earlier this month to check their safety measures for the plant's number four reactor. They have to satisfy tougher new government guidelines before they can restart any reactor. Company representatives said they're building a 22-meter breakwater in case of a tsunami. Regulators ask how they'd study the possible effects of an earthquake when data on the focal area are limited. And they asked how badly a tsunami could damage facilities that cool the reactors. Plant operators shut down their reactors two months after the Fukushima nuclear accident in 2011. Government officials asked them to take the facilities offline because they were concerned about the possibility of a megaquake. Japanese power companies have applied for safety screenings for 17 reactors at 10 plants. That's one third of the reactors across the nation. All of Japan's nuclear plants are offline. <laughs> Understood well uh, how those uh, uh, molten fuel debris are distributed and located. We need to uh, sample the debris and uh, we need to understand the mechanical character, characteristics and chemical characteristics of the debris. So otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot develop the uh, necessary tool to remove, re retrieve the debris. I hope we'd like to understand some, something about it uh, within a couple of years. It, it takes a long time to, to uh, it's just it's uh, difficult to uh, achieve it. Can we really say that the uh, decommissioning process will end within a 40 years? It's very difficult to talk about uh, uh, such a far future, but uh, it's really the, uh, takes a time actually. So even just for the removal of the debris and it takes uh, 10 years or more, I think. And you know the uh, half-life of the, the, for example, the cesium is uh, 30 years, so at some part of the decommissioning we need to wait. <laughs> the radiation will be reduced. There are different ways to decommission a nuclear plant, but they all involve risks. Given the state of Fukushima Daiichi, Kawano and his team need to account for unprecedented challenges when they choose options. He believes TEPCO executives will have to discuss it with stakeholders and explain the risks of the options before they decide what course of action they should take. We really need to uh, improve our capability of the risk communication in the future. That's uh, also our challenge. <laughs> Regarding also the decommissioning, so we need to share that information. Another major issue, as Kawano mentioned, is the toxic waste on site at Fukushima Daiichi. Every day, 400 tons of groundwater seeps into the highly radioactive units. Engineers pump it from buildings and into special tanks. They're in a constant race to build enough storage capacity to prevent any leaks into the environment. It's really impossible just to continuously accumulate that water in the tank. It's not a reasonable way. So we need to think about the uh, possibility of discharge or the other alternative ways, like uh, evaporation or something like that. TEPCO engineers are planning to introduce a new device. They say it's capable of removing all radioactive isotopes from the water. Kawano says 
the manager needs to talk to local residents in order to decide how to resolve this problem. Looking ahead, engineers have started updating the decommissioning roadmap. The government place the entire process would take 40 years. Right now, there is no concrete plan in place to fit that timeline. Says a trouble plague treatment system for radioactive water and its Daiichi plant stopped again on Wednesday. The system is supposed to run full speed from April. TEPCO says one of the plant's two working ALPS systems suddenly halted after setting off an alarm. The operator has been test running three systems since December last year. They removed most kinds of radioactive material from the tainted water. The utility plans to finish treating all the water at the site stored in hundreds of tanks by March next year. But the plan has been beset by trouble. Japan's crippled nuclear plant are getting ready to keep an eye out for a potential new problem. They plan to dig observation wells on the Fukushima Daiichi site in case a radioactive spill gets into the groundwater. More than 100 tons of contaminated water overflowed from a storage tank last month and spilled onto the ground. Staff with Tokyo Electric Power Company said someone opened valves that should have been closed. They're using pumps to recover about half the spillage and removing tainted soil. Still, they're worried contamination could get into the groundwater and spread. Staff say they'll dig observation wells in three places. And they'll dig a well that can use, they can use to pump up groundwater in case it gets tainted. Company officials say they're applying lessons they learned after an earlier leak. 300 tons of radioactive water spilled last August. Samples from wells showed it probably reached the groundwater. A fisherman's group in Japan is demanding to know what caused the latest spill of highly radioactive water at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The group says that last week's leak is causing them grave concern. Officials of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperative, Cooperative Association submitted a written request to Vice Industry Minister Kazuyoshi Akaba and urged him to launch a swift investigation. Fishermen are asking the ministry to ensure a full recovery of the spilled water. They're also calling for stepped-up monitoring of the effects of the spill on seawater and seafood. Akaba apologized for the incident to the fishermen and pledged efforts to prevent a recurrence. This is extremely deplorable because the leak was caused by human error. Tokyo Electric Power Company that operates a plant says someone may have left tank valves open, causing about 100 tons of contaminated water to overflow to the ground. From business to news here in Japan, many people attempting to recover from the physical effects of the 2011 disaster in northeastern Japan are also struggling with depression. A recent university survey indicates that over one out of four residents may suffer from the disease. A team from Tohoku University conducted the survey. Members interviewed nearly 3,800 residents of Miyagi Prefecture beginning in May 2013. The project's leaders said the results suggest depression is even more widespread than expected. He said the outcome could have been even worse if more people had participated in the survey. University officials say they plan to work with medical specialists and other organizations to combat the problem. They say they will continue to provide telephone counseling by clinical psychotherapists. Japan's environment ministry say an expected earthquake and tsunami off the country's Pacific coast could produce up to 350 million tons of debris. That's about 11 times the amount from the March 2011 disaster. The estimate covers a quake and tsunami along the so-called Nankai Trough. The officials came up with the figure after studying disaster scenarios involving possible large quakes. 
They then estimated the volume of debris and simulated disposal based on the 2011 quake and tsunami in northeastern Japan. They say getting rid of the debris from such a disaster could take between 11 and 19 Some farmers years. farmers in northeastern Japan are planting their land with an unusual crop for the region. They're hoping olives can help revive fields abandoned after the 2011 disaster. The plan is seeing seeds of success as their trees are starting to bear the fruits of their labor. NHK World's Jun Yotsumoto has the story. Motoya Sukira is working hard to spread olive farming in the city of Iwaki in Fukushima. He started five years ago trying to fill abandoned farmland with crops to boost agriculture in the area. He thought olives could attract interest, and they are rarely grown in Japan. But after disaster hit the region, many consumers were reluctant to buy products from Fukushima. More and more farmers gave up on the industry. So his group borrowed even more of their empty land and planted row after row of olive trees. They have more than 3,000 growing in 30 locations. Last year, he and his team produced their first ever fruits. When I brought in the idea of growing olives, it seemed everything was moving in the right direction. Everybody involved now feels energized to take on the challenge. Their passion has drawn attention from growers 900 kilometers away. A professional group from Shodoshima Island came to give Kira's team some growing tips and support. The result of your work will return to you. So I think the most important thing is every one of you should be determined to do the work that fits your soil conditions right until the end. Kira says he wants to fill the Pacific coastal area with olive trees, including land where the tsunami left layers of salt. The project has expanded to the neighboring prefecture of Miyagi. The town of Watari was severely hit by the tsunami. Survivors there have tentatively planted olives, believing they are strong enough to grow on salted land. Keiichi Saito's strawberry farm was washed away in the disaster. When he was losing hope, he was offered the idea of growing olives from Italy. His trees struggled at first, but they are now showing lush green leaves even in heavy snow. Our town was badly hit by the tsunami, so I want to grow leaves and make them a new specialty crop from our town. Kira's group has also started to process and sell products, which could create more income and jobs. These are samples of what they've created. Spearfish smoked with olive branches and preserved in olive oil. Noodles containing powdered olive leaves. Specialists test the radiation levels before they are sold. The olives have all been shown to be radiation free. Kira's project is attracting Motokatsu Kuana. He runs Italian restaurants in the city. He decided to grow olives, so his company rented some abandoned farmland. I feel like petting the leaves, saying, grow well, they're so dear. Kuana says his olives could give diners a unique experience in the future. We process the olives with our own hands. They're absolutely safe. I hope people from outside our city, like from Tokyo, will hear about our restaurant and that they will visit Iwaki to try our dishes. Kira says as the area struggles to rebuild nearly three years later, the olive trees offer branches of hope.
このピンチをこうチャンスに変えて We should turn a crisis into a chance to let Fukushima shine I believe we in the area have the responsibility to show our spirit and effort to the world He believes recovery means creating something new and growing crops that will help the future of his fellow farmers stay firmly planted in the region ジュニオツモト NHK ワールドいわき